When you're displaying a painting, it's important that the frame fits with the style of the work, or it may not look right. If you've got a painting that's hundreds of years old, however, the original frame may have been replaced with a newer one. Fortunately, help is at hand with these antique frame replicas. When a painting's original frame has been lost, a specialist can produce an exact replica or a historically accurate alternative. They use linden wood because it's relatively soft and even grained. First, they saw off the required length. Then they plane the sides to smooth the rough edges. Next, they saw the piece to the required dimensions. Once all the pieces for the frame are cut, they're fed through a machine called a molding planer. As its contoured steel blade spins, the blade's profile is carved into the wood. The workshop has thousands of blades, each with a different profile. They were all milled to shape from a flat bar of steel, following a profile drawing. Once each side is contoured, the ends are cut at a 45 degree angle. Then a slot is cut into each one. Glue is put in the slot. Then a piece of wood called a biscuit goes in. The piece of biscuit that sticks out will fit into the glued slot of the adjoining frame piece. Once the glue dries, the master carver gets to work. With a pencil he draws the frame's design onto tracing paper, then lays the paper upside down on the replica and retraces the design, which transfers it to the frame's surface. He then turns to his arsenal of chisels and begins carving out the design. Each chisel has a different tip and makes a specific type of cut. He first cuts into the wood along the outline, which severs the grain. This prevents the angled cuts he makes from splitting the wood beyond the outline. Changing chisels, he repeatedly removes small chunks of wood until the design emerges. He clears away the wood chips with a wire brush. Now the master gilder takes over, brushing on up to 20 coats of gesso, a traditional mixture of water, calcium carbonate, and a flexible glue made from rabbit skin. Flexibility prevents cracking when the wood expands and contracts. He brushes on four coats of another traditional mixture called bowl, made up of ultrafine particle clay, water, and again rabbit skin glue. Bowl provides background colors. It also provides a cushion between the gesso layer and the gold leaf. Next, a coat of what's called Gilder's Liquor, a combination of water, alcohol, and either gelatin or rabbit skin glue again. Then he cuts a piece of gold leaf, a sheet of pure gold a mere one ten thousandth of a millimeter thick. He applies it with a fine brush made of squirrel hair, which he's lightly oiled. As soon as he taps the frame, the water in the gilder's liquor pulls the gold leaf away from the oil that has made it stick to the bristles. Too much oil on the brush or too little water in the gilder's liquor can hinder this delicate transfer. Next, the master gilder rubs select areas with a polished agate stone. This burnishing process compresses the gold leaf, making it smooth and shiny. Now he'll make the frame look old. He removes some gold to create the appearance of wear. Then he applies a tinted glaze to simulate patina, natural darkening that develops over time due to the accumulation of airborne dust and dirt. He works in the glaze with a brush so that the fake patina looks perfectly natural. For this frame he uses 23 carat gold leaf, but gilders will also use different carats to achieve different shades of gold. The higher the carat, the yellower the color, because it has more gold in the composition and less copper and silver alloys, just to keep you in the frame.